trying to, we're trying to win this case. We're trying to be as prepared as we can to address the witness on the stand. We're not strategizing for appellate issues or to create appellate issues. And, and quite frankly, you know, in my estimation, there has been Brady violations. Mm -hmm. So where Brady ultimately, where have Brady violations gotten us? Not, not too far. And so, you know, I just wanted to know what was going on um, so I could best deal with what was right in front of me. And I think the rest of the attorneys did as well. And, and, and before that, can we, what are the, what are the biggest Brady violations that have occurred just in terms of like, I mean, we talked about some discovery violations, but just in terms of like pointing to the, to, to what do you think stands out the most? Well, there's reports. Uh, um, there's all sorts of, and, and, and this is, this is the problem when you have, I think it's fair to say, that in some ways law enforcement um, went about things in a more informal manner than we would we would expect. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but there were there's been many conversations that did not take place in an interrogation room that were videotapes. You know, we hear about, you know, we hear about one witness, the gentleman with the involved in the Adrian Bean situation, we hear about a, a recording being erased. We hear about uh, Mr. Copeland meeting with people at Turner Field. You know, we hear about all these different meetings where there's no documentation of. And Brady, most people think, oh, Brady means you have the DNA of someone else you know, on the crime scene, they need to hand that over or the DNA doesn't match the accused. They need to hand it over, but it also deals with impeachment. So every time a witness says something that's contradictory to what they've said previously, that's yes. impeachment. That's Brady. So we have all these informal statements where we don't have reports and all these meetings that there's not even documentation of that we hear about through Kenneth Copeland, just kind of talking, sometimes talking, you know, sometimes talking on, I was watching YouTube, sometimes talking about, oh, I met with so-and-so here. We had, you know, he was on YouTube talking about his time in the federal system and all these bizarre meetings. And we just don't have any documentation of any of that. So I'm, I don't have a lot of faith that we've received everything that we're supposed to have. Um, where we go from there, I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, it's troubling because the law says we're supposed to have. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the Alec Baldwin case, at least I think the criminal defense bar is hoping that's kind of a, a wake up call or at least the, the judge's endorsement of of Brady evidence there was was pretty strong. But it's just a matter of how does that translate to other courts? Right. Because in that case, essentially, as I understand it, you know, the 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 prosecutor was essentially saying, well, I didn't hand it over because I didn't deem it important. And it's like, well, it's not only you that gets to decide what's important. We get to decide. We get to choose our defense. We get to decide what's important, too. And if you never even give it to us to make that determination, then that's fundamentally unfair. Well, and it seemed like Glanville, I mean, I, I can remember some quotes from him where it's like he he talks a good talk, but he doesn't really follow up the walk because he would never really, really do anything about it when you guys would complain. But I remember his speech where he was he was obviously talking about Fonnie Willis, where he said your your D.A. used to be he, he used to do cases with her all the time and that she would tell him uh, you can have my whole file because if if you can beat me with it, then you deserve to win. And it was like, okay, that sounds great, but where is the enforcement of that in this case? And it was the same with him talking about how, oh my, you know, why can't you be more like federal practitioners? It's like, well, probably because the judge doesn't have any kind of standards close to what federal practitioners are are forced with. I mean, were you guys kind of working within the constraints of 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 the system? Like you could have done differently elsewhere. You know, I, I there's. There's the system as in 
the way the way what the law says and there's the system as the way people are used to doing it and i think in this case again i i don't mean to be a kiss up but again this case has a certain following that and it's been televised live yeah um on the internet for thousands of people to see maybe hundreds of thousands and so a lot of the stuff that's normalized doesn't necessarily fall through the cracks here. And I think that maybe just everyone in general and defense attorneys, prosecutors, judges, and I'm not singling anyone out, need to really evaluate kind of if we've gotten used to doing things a certain way and, you know, oh, that's okay because no one's ever complained about it before. So why wouldn't that be okay? Um, you know, with the with the ex parte meeting, I mean, I I don't believe that that was okay. Okay, but am I going to sit here and say, well, in Fulton County Courthouse, that's the only time something like that's ever happened? Yeah, I can't say that. I don't I don't know, but. I think things like that happen when we allow it to be normalized. And hopefully this yeah. is just a reset. And hopefully Alec Baldwin's case is just a reset for, you know, maybe maybe we're cutting corners. And I'm not blaming, again, I'm not putting on anyone. It's just as a system. And, and you know, defense attorneys have a role in that too. You know, if, if we allow things to happen, they're going to happen. And so that's why, you know, when Brian stood up, it was brave um, yes. Yes. because there's not a lot of, there's not a huge history of people just standing up and calling things out. And, but that's what needs to happen to kind of reset sometimes, I believe. Well, and one thing I've noticed from, from covering courts over the years, you learn that there, there really is no centralized database of how to track all this stuff. I mean, you, you know, can look through, look up case law, but there's no way to find out. It's like, okay, how many judges in the last week dismissed this charge? I mean, I, I'm sure you're on your, are you on email list serves with like the other defense attorneys in the Fulton County area where you kind of share cases and things like that, but that's basically it for a centralized database. Right. And, and, you know, as a member of the press, I mean, you would even, even the local press, um, you know, I don't even know how they would if, if if they wanted to find other cases that you would have to almost figure out who the attorney was and and figure out how to get that information. It's there's nothing centralized. And, and of course, you know, there's privacy concerns and everything else with it just being all public. I, you know, if I went to trial for accused of something very bad and, and I was acquitted, I don't know if I'd want the public just to be able to look me up in my case up at any time because you know even when you when you're acquitted people think a certain thing so i don't i don't know what the answer is but yeah there's there's no there's no centralized information um to kind of get at some of these things and then you know once in a while you say oh yeah i, I i've dealt with that officer but you run into another attorney i've dealt with that officer before you know this is what happened and and you kind of get information that way but it's really um, you got to do your digging and your due diligence. And even then you need some luck and you need someone else that's willing to cooperate to give you information. Yeah. 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 So, well, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, I'm trying to see if we have, um, some questions in the chat here. What, uh, I mean, what, I mean, we've talked about just kind of the unknowns going forward in terms of a bail motion, because like you said, a bail motion, is kind of filed on the assumption that the trial is going to continue. And there's some hope here that, that it won't continue. It's just how you force that to be remains to be seen. Is that is right? That right? And, 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 and there's not specifically an order one way or the other that it needs to be done. Um, I'm just quite honestly, I'm digesting this stuff along with everyone else and I'm figuring out where we go from here. So I haven't right. made any strong decisions one way or another about 